alternate break. All right? And our two opponents are two of the best players ever in the game. All right? Between these two players, they have won a major title in every single discipline within the game. Straight pull, eight ball, one pocket, nine ball, ten ball, you name it. Well, basically, they won it. It's as simple as that. Okay? First, one of our favorites that is always in Amsterdam, and he hails from Finland. He's a world nine ball champion. He has back-to-back -back U.S. Open nine ball championships. He's a WPA world ten ball champion, a World Cup of Pool champion, a World 14-1 champion. He's a Moscone Cup MVP. He was inducted into the BCA Hall of Fame. And from 2000 to 2010, he was the player of the decade. We put our hands together for the hitman, Mr. Mika Eminen. Iceman. Is that the Iceman? Sorry, the Iceman, Mika Eminen. All right. And, and, that's me. I'm sorry about that. Iceman. My okay. friend, actually. That's okay. I'm not going to make a hit call. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, yeah. Don't do that. Because you know, I mess them up all I the guess time. I guess we, we miss Thorsten. That's what it is. <laughs> no, nah, no, we don't. No, we don't. And again, his opponent, who I'm sure none of you need to know, uh, know who this is. None of you have any clue who this player is. Okay? Hailing from the Philippines. And I'm sure if you're a pool player, okay, you have all watched the video of the V-Shot on YouTube. It is the most watched pool shot ever on YouTube. So if you watch that shot, you know who this man is. He is a U.S. Open nine ball champion and a world nine ball champion. He's a Derby City master of the table, a World Cup of pool champion. One of the largest payouts in pool history was the IPT World 8-Ball, and he is the champion of that. He's a WPA World 8-Ball champion, a Challenge of Champions champion, and he is also a BCA Hall of play Fame player. He is touted as being currently the greatest player in the world. It is the magician, Efren. Bata Reyes! Wow. Hey guys, one last announcement. Uh, we are selling uh, these beautiful merchandise by the I Iceman, Mika Eminem. <laughs> he has his own glove, guys. It's limited. He only made 100 of these. And we, I think, from what I understand, we're the only one who has any of them left. Uh, we have uh, the beautiful pool glove that he has. Uh, with the, I believe, the, the, with the nice grip, because some of you guys, when you playing on the pool, you know, you're slipping here and there. Um, he has an anti-slip pouch that goes with it, which is really nice, that you can lean anywhere, and it will not move your cue. I'm telling you, your cue will not move at all, which is amazing. And it has a microfiber cloth with it. Um, so if you want, if you're interested, you can see uh, Kim in the front. Uh, the gloves go for $34.99 plus tax. The uh, anti-slip pouch is $24.99. 99 plus tax and the uh, microfiber towel is 499 plus tax but if you buy all three you'll get it for 5499 so if you act now <laughs> and you get all that and the man himself would be happy to sign it for you all right so with every purchase okay thank you guys for your time and let's go let's get it on
Okay, guys. Uh, looks like we're ready to start. Thanks so much to David um, and the rest of the team for, for making this happen. Hopefully you guys have got a drink, you're settled in, or the kettle's on the boil. Nice cup of tea, as we say back home. I'm just waiting for Michael uh, to go live as well. I'm just plugging his mic in. Guys, just give us a thumbs up if you can hear me. Uh, my name's Del Sim, uh, one of the Amsterdam pool players. Uh, represented along with Michael, Mika, Torsten, Sean Alaska, and Hunter Lombardo. So we've got quite a pool of players here. I believe Mike is just getting ready now. Yeah, thanks to everyone that tuned in. Everyone that uh, saw it on my page as well. Uh, that's the Dell, the Highlander Sim. If you can go and give that a like and a share, I'd love you to pieces. We are going to have a race to 15 here. Race to 15, I believe it's Texas Express. Uh, there is a little bit of money on the side, so these guys will be competitive. But we're hoping they can put on a show for everyone that's turned up here. I'd say we have a good 200 people in the, in the room right now. Uh, and these guys have been seated for about two hours waiting for this. Uh, some in the front row. Uh, hope to God there's not a fire because there's no way we're getting out. It's Jambo. Yeah, we're on for a treat here. So you can see Efren getting ready to, to queue up. Efren's got a break. All right, guys. Nails uh, the seven ball. Sorry, Mike, you just want to introduce yourself, bud? I've done most of it. Yeah, this is uh, Michael Yannick. I'll be joining Dell here. Uh, sorry, guys, they're using uh, one of the mics for the introductions. So it uh, should be a lot of fun. Excited about this match. Uh, yeah, no one's favored to win here. I do suspect that Efren's going to play a safety off the one right here uh, behind the two ball or this uh, these three balls. Actually, five balls here in the uh, lower left corner. So yeah, me and Mike were it's the first time we've actually sitting apart. So we, we both have separate separate mics. Uh, the controls are being done uh, by Rad and his team. So if we need to change a camera angle, you'll just hear us say that we want to change. Uh, and we are looking at the table live. So you guys are watching off the stream. Uh, we're going to commentate off the table live. So we're watching it um, on the rail. So we might not get to see all the angles. Um, so do bear with us on that side. Yeah, uh, Efren just came up short on that shot. He tried to go off the other side, but uh, just wasn't able to get enough speed on the cue ball. I suspect Mika's going to play a safety. No, no chance, mate. <laughs> yeah, he's going to save himself. Ooh, uh, this table is ro rolling quick already. You can kind of see that. That's a, a bit of a bad roll. He might be able to kick the nine in, or uh, actually he's going to play a safety, kicking the two on the left side as we're looking and trying to put the cue behind the nine, but he hit it on the wrong side. Got a little leakage uh, with the two ball. Yeah, looks like the first chance is, uh, is going to go to, to Efren now. The, uh, I don't see a problem here, Mike, do you? Nah, he'll play the four uh, probably in the side instead of the corner. Depending on what angle he gets on this. Oh, if he gets funny on this. Is that is that jaw hooked him? Yeah, he got corner hooked. I think he's jaw hooked. Right on the point. How's your luck? Yeah, that's a very unfortunate roll there. And now we're going to have to see Efren's kicking ability first off. So personally, I'd love to see this. I want to see which way he goes. He has the two rails, I think. He can go two rails or he might even go, yeah, two to three rails here. He's going to use the inside pocket. Yeah, three rail play here. Definitely. And he's going to try and make this ball. This will be impressive. This is top right. Ooh. Didn't account enough for the slide. You hear the crowd there just give it a... Ooh. Yeah, now Mika has choice, and he'll probably play for the four in the corner as opposed to the side now that he's got ball in hand. I don't know, you know. Do you think he'll come the other side of it? I, li I like playing it in the side pocket. I just yeah. don't think he's going to try too much with this. That's what I was originally going to play, uh, but he, I think he's got both options. Yeah, yeah he did pocket. choose the side, yeah. And now he can play uh, above the five and play the uh, five in the corner uh, where he played the three. Shout out to my boy Raj Hundal. I don't think I'd be playing American Paul if it wasn't for him. Um, great friend of Mika, so great to see that he's tuned in. 
all the way from the UK. Hope to see you back soon, brother. Yeah, all the rest of the balls will go in the quadrants they're in, so he'll probably play a little one pocket with a 5 8 9 and put the 6 in the right corner. So, uh, Amika, very fortunate to, to get back to the table uh, after that miss, uh, miss kick, I'll say. And uh, our friend's doing a going to have to sit until uh, the next rack and uh, see what Mika does off the break. Yeah, this is a nice one for Mika just to feel. There's no other player in the world, except perhaps Raju I just mentioned, who would go three rails and inside there. <laughs> but he's feeling out the table. It's uh, It's been freshly cleaned. Um, some of the rails are, are going to react differently with the lights. You can see the light setup. We've got a very uh, a very bright setup here for you guys. Yeah, very live table. And it's uh, it's reacting very lively. So, nice, nice first uh, rack there for Mika. I think he was a little bit fortunate as he realizes that uh, Ephra made a, an error in position. Getting jaw hooked in the corner um, of the side pocket there. Yeah, very unfortunate there. Uh, close kick for Efren on the three, almost made it. Just came a hair thin. <laughs> Uh, this is a race to 15, right, Del? This is a race to 15, Texas Express rules. I think the nine does count on the break, so um, the players will be looking to get it moving. The Outsville Accurac is in play, so I expect to see tight racks all the way through by John. Yeah, six ball in the lower right corner, one ball towards the side, probably veering towards the corner uh, where the cue ball is. And uh, Mika doesn't have to hit this too hard with the magic rack, so it may take a little off. We're going to try and get the uh, try and get the score on the live stream as well. So that is 1-0. Uh, just going to change the graphic for you guys, ready to go. Uh, but it is just 1-0. We're right at the beginning right now. Three balls gone terribly safe. Yeah, I'm not sure if it slides by the eight or not. If it does, Mika could play position, cutting the two. He could. Do you think he would attack the nine, Mike? Um, With the three sitting where it is, I think that affords natural safety if he tries to attack the nine. I, I, I like that play. Uh, that's a very aggressive play but if the three is is in a bad position then that's probably the safest play no pun intended <laughs> hey Blair yes they are they are playing for a little bit of something on the side here uh, but we are technically an exhibition match but none of these guys want to lose this is Mika's home room uh, so he'll want to put on a good show for the crowd as well I think he's gonna cut it try to go yeah try to play short side position what on the a beautiful three. beautiful shot this is I mean, it's, gonna, it's, it's gonna get a little unfortunate Oh, got a little fortunate, I think. Beautiful shot. Uh, great shot by Mika. I, if he doesn't have the shot, he can play safe, but I'm pretty sure he, he pushed it right in position. Yeah, he's just going to draw, draw this one out. Yeah, he needs a little angle to get on the five, and this he is, might. This is good. I like this. You go forward. Between yeah, he, between the seven nine, what do you think? I like that. Or he could use low outside and come, come around that... Um, he could go two corner. ways, yeah. He could go two ways. I think you're right. He can come below the eight, so he could draw this two rails and back around. Yeah, it looks like that's what he's doing. Oh, oh he went forward. forward. So he had two options there, guys. I like the forward option. It, it, it does lead to natural shape on the five to the seven, and he'll play a Z pattern on the seven to the eight. So he'll come a little under the seven here. Yeah, very nice. It looks like Mika's into a, a nice loose rhythm stroke already. Yeah, he may not even have to go the rail. He could draw it, but Mika does like to pound this a little. If you can see there, but he's using the Mez Ignite shaft, so the Mez is uh, carbon fiber line. Yeah, Mika's got a couple uh, sponsors. He's got Town Chalk as well, and uh, he uses Zan Tips. Also, of course, sponsored by Amsterdam Billiards, uh, which uh, take care of you and I and uh, Sean Morgan, uh, Alaska. Hunter. Uh, Tony Robles. Oh, there's some time, Tony. And uh, Jennifer Barretta, who is actually ranked number one right now in the WPA. Fantastic uh, achievement already. Women's Pro Bowl. So Bowl early in the season, it's uh, a great start to 2020 for her. <laughs> Two to zero, guys. You can see there, Mika just taking an early lead. He, uh, he won't be letting up on Efren whatsoever. It's a big momentum game, so uh, we got a lot of uh, time left in this match, but... Uh, Right now, things are going uh, a little Mika's way with the uh, safety on the three for uh, Efren and then the position on the three for uh, Mika on the second rack. So uh, getting some fun little action going on. Uh, I should mention uh, Efren's sponsor is uh, Puyat Sports.
and I think he's doing a couple raffles on some cues. And we heard earlier that Miko's uh, selling some of his Iceman products. Yeah, Zion. Uh, Zion does play here regularly, but I don't believe he's sponsored by the room. He's uh, he does have other affiliations. However, we love Zion here. He's a fantastic straight ball player, line ball player. Um, a very hard working man too. He manages to fit a lot in. Good to see Jesse. Thanks, Jesse Garcia, for tuning in. Uh, he's the president of OBQs. One of my fantastic sponsors is uh, just started up once more. Head over to obqs.com if you can. And he's playing the two ball in the corner and the one ball towards the side. And yeah, he didn't hit that hard enough. Do you see that? He kind of decelerated, and that's what pushed the uh, the two to the corner. Yeah, the nine did move on that rack though as it well. Move, it yeah, it, it rolled down, awkward. which is a, a little awkward, but uh, or, or a little odd with a with a template rack. Guys, do your best to give Billiards Media a like and a share as well. They're the ones that are streaming this on behalf of uh, Amsterdam Billiards. So we're, although we're live on the Amsterdam page, it is Billiards Media behind all of this uh, great setup that we have here. The uh, beautiful Teresa Jackson is watching as well. Uh, uh, that's right. Rad's. Uh, uh, other uh, young lady that also works at Amsterdam Billiards. Other half. Uh, other half, I should say. Not other lady. I mean, he's got... No, he doesn't. He's, 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 a, he, he's quite the gentleman, actually. <laughs> um, cheeky chappy, we'd call him. A cheeky chappy. <laughs> cheeky fella. A cheeky fella. Hey, guys, give us a shout. Give us, uh, Tell us where you're tuning in from. Uh, I, no doubt that we've got some global followers here, not just here in New York City. Ephraim getting a bad roll again. Um, maybe just taking a little bit more time to get used to the table. He only yeah. just arrived an hour before this. Yeah, Mika practiced for a good half hour, 45, before uh, Ephraim showed up. Yeah, benefit of the homeroom. Mika also is quite familiar playing under these conditions. He's played uh, out of this room for at least 10 years. We got a little bit of uh, different camera angles here for you guys, and uh, we also have uh, instant replay. We'll try to uh, use those um, as we progress in the match. What a great position shot Mika just played there. Got right in the window between the eight and you nine. You can tell he's, uh, he's in the zone already. He's played two great positional shots using the full length of the table. He's going to play short side here for the uh, three, I believe, unless he's going to go forward around the six. He chose to go forward around the six again. Good shot. And. Uh, He'll be above the four to naturally get down table for the five. The four to the five still isn't super natural. It will take a, a quality position play for Mika. As long as he stays above the four here, he can use just the, the one rail to drift down for the five. He needs to stay high and that bobbled. You can see there he hit that into the rail, so didn't get a great contact on that one. And that was him just trying to stay high, as you can see, stay high on the four. So that he was able not to, he didn't have to go up and down the table. Look at these guys. Alan Scott, Kokodi, my homeland in Scotland. Guys from Australia. Hope you guys are doing well down there. Yeah, thank you very much for everyone tuning in. We really do appreciate it. If you guys could like and share uh, this match, uh, spread the word that a great match is going on, we'd really appreciate it. Yeah, really nice. So you see what Efren did there. He managed to get um, above the Ford, which was what Miku was trying to do previously. This just means he can, uh, he can either come one rail across and guarantee shape, or he can come underneath the nine. Let's see what which way he comes. He came across the table to guarantee shape rather than trying to stun below the nine ball. Yeah, I like low outside here, but he could just go forward and come one rail with inside. Yeah, this is Efren. He loves to spin the ball. I'd say at every opportunity he's going to use two rails. He got a nice angle to get back up table for the seven. And he'll probably try to, try to stay towards the right side of the table so when he plays the eight and nine, he doesn't have to do too much work, which he did. Yeah, Efren will just be happy to get a point on the board and uh, get his uh, match underway. Right, he'll try to get the cue back where it is now. He can swing two rails or come one rail. Yeah, some great, some great camera work there as well. We love having the mobile camera out in the out in the stands. It gives you guys a different perspective from the ones that we normally see on streams, where they're fixed. And, uh, looks like Efren's going to get his first one on the board. Uh, let's see what the crowd reaction is. Mm. Oh, it's not not hometown favoritism here. Lots of lots of applaud for Efren. Yeah, 
everyone wants to see the magician do well. As you can see, this is kind of like this might be his last tour in America, so he is fully booked out over the next few days on the East Coast before the Derby City. The uh, the score is currently two one guys. Uh, Mika with two, Efren with one. It is alternate break, right? Yeah. Hey, Jeff Conway joining us. Jeff was a, a good long-time sponsor of Efren. Uh, a lot of Filipino players that came across to, to USA. Yeah, John Francisco, we, uh, we both know. Uh, good to yeah. see him around from Queens area. Fantastic. Elvis Rodriguez, who's also going to be in that event that you're, uh, you're going to be on. Do you want to do a little oh, yeah. announcement about that, Del? Oh, the Players Brawl on Sunday, hosted by Tony Robles. Uh, he's going to be up there for a fantastic cause with pancreatic cancer and uh, Crohn's colitis. Uh, there's going to be about 24 teams, um, of pro players and MMA fighters, that are mixing up for a Scotch team doubles. Yeah, it should be quite interesting. That's on bar box, right? No, it's going to be on the full tires, full size tables. Oh, nice, nice, nice. Yeah, uh, nice do you get the play or just commentary? So I'll be playing and uh, doing a bit of commentary as well. Awesome, uh, awesome. Sean Alaska will be joining us from this room. I believe Mika will be there also. Another dry break. Uh, this is a, a bit of a surprise with the Magic Racks. You can see the nine moved again. Uh, so there might be a gap between the back balls and the nine. So we'll see if, uh, if that continues or not. Yeah, John's well known for a bit of a dodgy fudge rack. <laughs> but what a fantastic uh, safety that is. Most players would have pushed out there, but... I think he's put. He's managed to put Mika behind the behind the nine ball here, and this isn't an easy shot. Yeah, he'll have to actually spin off a rail to get position on this. It's not a natural angle, so. Are jump it, cues allowed? I'm sure they are, but he's he's going to mass say slightly to create the angle. Well, he he might get a good roll. Managed to get a good hit, but I think Efren's. Oh, he's got a roll, and I know that Efren doesn't jump. So let's see what he's probably just going to try and kick behind this. You know, I have seen Efren jump once. Have you? I have. Did it, was it jumping off his chair or? <laughs> he, he does seem, seem quite vibrant. Yeah, that's, that's not going to cut it. Yeah, that was, uh, again, I think he was just trying to use the, the speed of the table there. But the, you can see the left-hand side just stopped halfway down the table and it didn't, didn't take off the rail as he expected. Now, I like to move the four here and put the four in a better position. The four-e combination is good. But Mika can push the four out of towards the side pocket and the two balls by the other side. It might be a good play to just move the four now or move the eight. He chose to move the eight. Uh, very uh, wise play there. Now he can back off the two to get position on the three. A little bit of draw. Or he can spin around. Okay, he's spinning around with follow. Uh, he did bring the seven into play. Got a little bit of a roll there. Yeah, very fortunate. The pace of the cue ball just allowed that to open up. But he hasn't got a good angle on this. Um, I feel like he can just maybe just drag drag draw this to the just past the eight. You mean short side position? Yeah, and play short side for the four. Mika eight. likes a, a four rail position that he likes to play here if he can get above the, the seven. Uh, eight. The, seven, the seven's big though. If you're playing this four, yeah, no, I four hear rails, saying, the, yeah, seven, yeah. the seven's huge. But this is an exhibition, and this is Mika. And so he tried it. Yeah, he did try it. Yeah, <laughs> he tried it, and it took the tangent a little too much. Oh yeah. Yeah, the tangent was just too much because he put he put low low English on that when maybe just left would have been enough. <laughs> so Efren uh, getting another chance here, and this is to this is to level it up, guys. Yeah, we'll be tied two two um, after we'll this after this ball in hand, very likely. We'll call that the Desmond, the Desmond two two. <laughs> the the double dip. <laughs> Uh, sorry guys, uh, Efren took the uh, side pocket route but came a little far, so he's got to kill the cue ball or travel. I think he's going to kill it with inside. Yeah, I, I mean, he has a very soft touch. I mean, look at that. It's a beautiful shot. Yeah, notice the inside widened the angle so he didn't get too steep on the eight. I did enjoy that one. I think he'll play short side here and play to the left side of the table as opposed to the right. Yeah, notice how he played to the left side. That was much more natural than trying to get to the uh, right side of the table. You know what they say, guys. I mean, we were saying uh, Efron was just getting used to the table, but look how quickly he's managed to dial in and get the speed down. Fantastic.
knotted up at 2 2, guys. That was a fantastic uh, out there by Efren. Did get a little bit squirrely on the seven, but managed to get out. That's the Tony Robo. Tony Robles. Getting a little bit front and center there. Yeah, he'll be at that event. He's actually running that event with you tomorrow. He, he'll be hosting on Sunday, that's correct. And just uh, behind Tony, you can see Alaska, Sean Morgan. And, uh, and some other players in the house. Uh, looking around, looking around. We can just Lots of regulars. Sammy's in the straight pool league. He's a good player. We got... Um, we can just update that score to 2-2. Two -two. That's great. Yeah, he's got that. We're all set. Okay, the five went. And see the nine ball didn't move that much? No, it was a better rack that time. And yeah. you see Efren hit it much harder. The, the three, really, the three doesn't have a pocket right now. Right, or does it go long past the four? Or does he have the carom on the seven? You like the carom? Oh, man, that's, I, that's I, rough I, I can't that. tell just now. I'm not sure how uh, high the three is. But uh, camera angle, uh, I'm sure uh, he's going to get us a, a good camera angle for that he. He really wanted to draw that down and out, and instead he, uh, he hit it a little thin. Didn't get the draw to take, so he's in a bad spot here. Especially if the three doesn't doesn't uh, line up with the carom on the seven. Just to confirm, guys, we've only been live for the last 25 minutes. There has been a bit of warm-up, so the game hasn't been live for an hour. I think if... Uh, if Mika ever took an hour for four games, he'd kill himself. Oh, wow. Incredible shot. Oh, oh. And the nine ball. <laughs> that got the magician smiling. Yeah, great roll there for Efren. <laughs> A little bit of entertainment there. That's got the crowd excited. Yeah, we all have to see a, a slot nine every now and again. Everyone's personally, smiling. I, yeah. personally, I do love when I'm in a tournament that it's uh, it's cool nine. <laughs> yeah. But this is an exhibition. We do like to see that. Uh, the nine is wild at all times, even off the break. We are using the Outsfield Accurac, so we don't expect to see many nines off the break, but you never know. Well, I see Sydney there in the background. He's been playing pool for, for a long time, one of Tony Robles' students. Yeah, there's a great turnout here from New York. We've got way over 200 people in the room right now. Uh, this is probably the biggest one. Over the last year since I've been doing this, this is the biggest turnout that I've seen for these two players. All right, so the two ball went straight oh, Look in. at the nine, see that? And see the kick? Oh! <laughs> that was the kick we were talking about, the nine stayed planted. I bet you Mika's going to do a power follow on this one ball and come right for the 3-9 combo. You think so? Do you think he might try the, four, uh, the three railer with uh, left, yeah. left English? Uh, he I could... don't even think he'll try and make the one. I think he'll try and come three rails around. No, he's. I, I think he's going to power follow this and try to go towards the 4-5. Oh, you don't think he's going to attack the 9? Sorry, I thought you meant... No, no, he was no. Be, one, then 3-9. He's going to go for a gravy shot. Yeah, he's going to hit pure follow. Yeah, there we go. What a nice shot that was. Did he draw it back or he play follow? He, he drew oh, it he back. did the draw shot. Okay, that's yeah. the other option. So He's got a nice 3 9, yeah. 3 9. Nice quick one, guys. So, quick one back. Levels it up at 3 3. He wasn't going to let Efren get away with a nice easy 9. Yeah, a couple short racks, guys, and a quick score change. If you're just tuning in, we are here live at Amsterdam Billiards in New York City. This is around Union Square, uh, 11th Street, between 3rd and 4th Avenue, to be precise. Okay, so he's playing the three ball in the lower right corner and the one ball towards the side. You the two he, ball you and the he moved one. in a little. He didn't go off the rail, you see that? Yeah, so, he did a cut break. So I think he realized that the ball wasn't going as a wing ball for him, so he moved the cue ball slightly inside to the first diamond. 
that's something that, that I, I've seen players do at a professional level. Um, when the break's not working, they kind of you can you can dial it in just by moving the cue ball across that um, across the bulk line. Yeah, I think he's going to use a little bit of inside English, cut this to the left pocket, and come around the two. That was the right way to go. Oh, too much English, so I overcut it slightly. But it's not it's not the worst result, although Miko will be giving he's doing his famous head tilt. Do you do the handshake or he the hand he twist? No, we haven't seen the hand twist yet. That's my favorite move. He'll be disappointed with that leave. I think he'll cut this with inside English or left English and go towards the six. What do you think of that, Chateau? Think you can cut in and check it? Which one? Uh, left English on the one, cutting into the left corner. I think maybe just plain ball is easy enough. Or oh, we overcut it too. Well, friend has got a couple safety options here. They are playing an exhibition match, so they could try to be a little more aggressive. It is a, it is a 9 by 5 table. Um, I think he's looking to, to go three rails with the Q and hit the five ball and use the four ball as a blocker. So he's going to hit the right side of the three and come three rails around the four ball and hit the five ball and use the five ball as a blocker. Oh, he just yeah. leaked out. I mean, it was the right call, but wow. Yeah, very, very unfortunate roll for Efren that the one ball happened to land in the window. I mean, he, he had the perfect line, but he just hit the, uh, hit the five a bit fat. A nice easy shot. I think I, I imagine uh, Mika will take these out quite speedily. Uh, won't waste any time. I don't see any difficulty in this out. Yeah, after after Efren moved the five, the rack's pretty simple. He got a little straight, so I'll have to pound this a hair. I, I suspect he'll draw it back a little and just accept a little longer shot on the five. Not too much. He might add the exact angle, actually. Now I'm looking at it, yeah. It's a nine by four and a half. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we got some experts out there in the uh, in the land of the internet. They probably want to hear a story at some point. You want to hear a story? I don't think we've got a Danny Diliberto story. No, 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 Danny Diliberto stories here. Sorry, guys. Sorry. This is uh, this is all strategy. <laughs> this is pretty connect the dot here, and uh, looking at a four three uh, in favor of Mika after this rack. We are racing at 15 guys, so we still have some uh, quite a bit of life here. Uh, Mika goes up four to three. <laughs> and they are using the Outsville, as you've been saying, Dell. Uh, the players have been playing the wing ball in the last two or three racks. Uh, John's been given really good racks. It's been going straight in the pocket, and yeah, they've been yeah. able to play position on the one. I wonder if, um, wonder if Miko will try and mimic what uh, Efren did the last rack there and move the cue ball slightly in table. Yeah, come into the box and do a cut break, you think? Yeah. I like that, because then you, you tend to get the cue ball to cross back for the one ball, and the one ball goes towards the pocket where you break from. Yeah, let's see. John Lehman, an international referee, so I expect a good rack from him every time. Yeah, he just uh, got lined up with uh, Matchroom Sports, so he's been doing a lot of their sports uh, refereeing. Uh, does an amazing job for them. Uh, I was, did have an opportunity to go see Matchroom uh, do their thing at the uh, recent event in Las Vegas, and that was phenomenal, the Moscone Cup. Anyone interested in that, they should check that out online. Okay, so I think he's playing the five ball in the corner, and we switch you the one track towards the opposite, or, well, the corner where he's breaking from. And uh, made almost everything. This natural two railer towards the three. Yeah, that was very nice. And you see Miko, Miko was comfortable there just staying on the rail and gave it a little bit more cut than perhaps Efren was. That's why Efra moved in 
Guys, greatly appreciate you watching this match. We're at 1.2 thousand already, uh, live viewers. Uh, that's awesome, guys. Really appreciate it. Uh, please go ahead and share these uh, as much as you can and get as many people as we can to check this out. And it's not often you get to see such a great match, uh, especially live. Yeah, Mika making quick work of this one. Yeah, I like to go two rails here, long rail, long rail, back to the middle. He could also just try to swing wide with one rail. He chose the two rail route too. Stop shot on the seven, he's good on the nine. Pretty pretty easy rack after that break. What did he make, three or four balls in the break there? Easy, getting the home crowd back on side. Stretching out that two game lead again. All right, the Iceman takes home another uh, point. I imagine we'll get to about 10 racks total. They, they may take a break or they may just push on through. We are on a time window here um, up until 9 p.m. this evening. Uh, Del, uh, sorry, you mentioned your sponsor, Obi. Do you have any other sponsors you want to uh, mention while we got a little break here for the rack? I can give them a shout at the end. Let's enjoy the match for now. And uh, hopefully the guys, uh, for the players here, they're all on a list. So some lucky players are going to get to be able to play uh, with Efren and with Mika at the end of this. So I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> Hey, thanks very much guys. I know those that are tuned in that have liked and shared already. Um, we'd love to get this up and over 2,000. Efren just wiggled one in there and the, the balls didn't split as well. I mean, he certainly gave him enough, but you can kind of see he overcut that. So no power generated into the break. And he was lucky not to scratch. He's going to have to play a safe on the two. I don't think he can go for anything unless he's got a, a wired combination on the two, three, and a side. But it doesn't look like it's at all lined up. So I, I suspect he's going to play a safe here. Yeah, he's got nothing nothing else to give. He's just going to use the uh, seven. Oh, he's, not, he's not come far enough either. Yeah, he was trying to safe with the eight, nine. Came up a little short. Mika's an exceptional banker. If he can't make this in the side pocket, he'll bank it cross side. And he's very likely to make this shot. By the way the uh, three went, he might actually went for that three ball, you know, the uh, two three combination. Cause you think I, so? Maybe, because it almost looked like he was playing position for the two bank, but yeah. I don't know. I think he just shorted the uh, shorted the safe a little there. I think this is a bank shot if it doesn't go in the side. And he's going to bump the nine as well, which is perfect. So he's opened up the eight ball. Yeah, it makes his work a lot easier. But he, ha he will be slightly hampered now by that nine ball queuing over there. So good queuing is going to be required. He also has to fade the six ball a little bit. Uh, it would be a bad roll, but he is going towards the six on this shot unless he uses a pure follow shot. I think he's opting to that to avoid the six. Yeah, so a tough shot there. So he's, he didn't really get into that, although the, the, the queuing was nice. He wasn't able to get low enough on the cue ball to get to the other side of that. And I think that's a foul. I don't think he hit it. So yeah, he gives that shot up. Oh, he came just a little move. short. Just trying to get that extra thin. And this will be very natural. He'll he'll just roll right to the long rail. Have a nice draw shot for the seven. And I believe the eight goes by the nine in the right corner. Hey, that's great, Mark Wilson. Thanks very much for your help, for your support as well. This is just a low outside, primarily draw. Came a little short. He would have liked to come up table a little further, but uh, he can make this with a little inside and he'll maintain position on the eight ball here. Just center right here. He's switching up hands. Efren is very good opposite handed. I think he'll take the carom. Or do you think he'll just play the eight plane? If the eight goes, I believe he'll play the eight. If it doesn't go, then he'll play the carom. Yeah, we, we are watching this from the side, guys, so we don't have the benefit of the camera angles. Yeah, in front he's, of us. he's got the eight clean by the angle he's at. Looks like he pushed that a little bit. He was a little bit hesitant. <laughs> Thank you so much. 
of all those guys in the chat room making positive comments for uh, Amsterdam that are putting the stream on and sharing it for everyone uh, involved with Paul. I think it's a fantastic exhibition they put on here using their own money. You know, these guys, they don't charge an entry fee either. It's uh, free for everyone and this stream is free for everyone as also. So unless you're paying for the stream, uh, I just prefer if you keep your negative comments to yourself and just enjoy. Yeah, Amsterdam does have the uh, a couple league finals coming up uh, Monday, and they have a, a playoff match, a semi-final match uh, Saturday. Uh, Amsterdam will be uh, streaming that live, and then they'll have uh, the finals match for the Straight Pole League being streamed live as well. Uh, so a couple other matches, if you guys are interested in watching uh, Straight Pole at all, uh, will be coming up later uh, on in this week. Ephraim will be at the Derby City Classic. I believe uh, after this weekend, um, he will be traveling, traveling down that way. Yeah, Mika as well. Mika's got a couple of uh, couple of events prior to that. Efren actually will be at the Karam Cafe uh, over in Flushing, Queens for a memorial event, an eight ball event tomorrow. Uh, it would be hasten to add there. We've got a great weekend of pool in New York right now. Yeah, that's been uh, put on by Ira Lee. Uh exceptional person and he's got some new light stuff that we'll be seeing at the predator events coming up soon so we'll look out for that uh but uh looks like mika's got a nice little run here he came up a little short on the four he would have liked to come a little further down so he could play the six in the side but um how to do a little more work maybe play for the six in the opposite um left corner yeah he went three rails for the six in the other corner nice shot there Very nice. And then it's almost a stop out after that. Enjoyed that. This is the way that, he, uh, that Mika plays. He likes to play at a nice, fast rhythm. Yeah, no slow play here. Not quite as fast as you, Dell, but no slow play here. <laughs> uh, he's a bit more accurate. I'll give him that. But when you're a multiple world champion playing arguably the GOAT. It goes. So for me, I mean, I'm going to be controversial here and say that my favorite player of all time is actually Earl Strickland. Oh, that's very controversial. Very controversial. I like that. I like that. Don't get me wrong, Efren brought so much to the game, he brought knowledge, he brought uh, a different style of play. You know, he introduced how good you could be at multiple games. You know, you're not just talking nine ball, you're talking ten ball, one pocket, straight ball, banks. The guy could do it all. But for me, in the game of nine ball uh, and the TV era, someone like Earl, as much as a character as he was, he's not always been the way that he is. Um, but he made a fantastic impact on the game for me, and that's why I think he'll always have a place in my heart as the greatest of all time. Especially nine ball. I, I, I Especially. find a lot of players uh, would agree with you on the nine ball aspect there. You know, take away his like, off table antics and, you know, his, his talking and things like that. He is a character, but if you look at how dominant the guy was at nine ball, oh my god. Yeah, there was a time it seemed like no one could beat him. And it was a beautiful power play, you know, it was always that, that, that kind of. Cycle, that kind of arrogance that came with the game that you kind of, I think you needed back in the 80s and 90s. Very aggressive. Very aggressive. Uh, I think you hit the one into the eight and get the cue safe behind the uh, four and the nine. Hope the eight doesn't go in. Hope the eight Ooh, doesn't go in. Doesn't go in. <laughs> <laughs> a little scary there, but he played a good shot. He would have been a little unfortunate to pot, pot the eight in that situation. Yeah, and he's not really left over the hole um, for, for Mika to attack. It's slightly off the rail there. Yeah, Mika has a, a couple blockers if he wants with the 4-9, or he could play aggressive. Here's the thing. I mean, we are playing on a Brunswick here. Yeah, he chose to play a bit aggressive. And the, the pockets are generous, shall we say. Yeah, nice shot by Mika there. And great bank knowledge. And, and that was played... That was played definitely because the uh, pockets are, are nice and uh, standard. We're, we're going to say that these pockets here are slightly larger. The, the room is a, is a predominantly straight pool room. So there's a lot of straight pool that gets played here. So the pockets are set up in that fashion. I think they're around 475, 4.75 inch. 
Yeah, some of the commentators or some of the uh, people on the stream are talking about uh, Mike Siegel. Mike Siegel also was another phenomenal uh, American uh, beast in, in, in all the games. Really a straight pull, uh, phenomenal player in nine ball. He just dominated everything. You'd have to bring Allen Hopkins into that same you know round. There's there's a lot of great Alan players. Hopkins too. Wow, yeah. This is just uh, uh, Dell's uh, favorite player, but there, there are a lot of great players in that era. Uh, you know, yeah. Allen played all the games well, including one pocket and. Straight should, I, should I have said that's just my ball. opinion? Yeah. <laughs> it's not, I just, it's I'm, I'm, I'm looking the on the notes. Angle. Yeah, guys are <laughs> guys are getting like a little crazy out there. <laughs> oh, I think it's one of the best uh, conversations that's out there, you know, yeah. but it is personal opinion only. You know, there's never going to be, it doesn't matter how, how many, you know, US Opens they win, how many world titles they win. But definitely entertainment-wise, you'd have to throw Earl in there with, uh, with Efren. Oh, yeah, 100%. They've had some battles along the way as well. Great stuff on YouTube that you can watch and tune into. Nice stuff by Mika just, the Iceman. Just giving a little fist pump there. So Mika really wants this. Let's just look at the score. Uh, looks like that is six to four. Uh, seven four actually. Oh, Della red seven went four. Up another one. Seven four. Master of Ceremonies, uh, John Lehman, putting the rack together for Mika. I'm going to try to give a little bit of rack knowledge here. Uh, if he does break from the right side, as they have been, I would gamble that the 1, 5, 6, 8 are going to be up table. Let's see if that's true, and I'll make the 4 in the corner. So 1, 5, 6, 8 are going to be at the top half of the table. Uh, the eight Everything. went all the way up and came back down. So Everything got kicked in a bit. Yeah, he's looking pretty good on the one, though. The two ball's in a bad spot. It may go on the side. I think there's enough room by the, the seven to play it in the left side if Mika can get over there uh, between the eight and nine position. I love doing commentary with Mike. His, uh, his passion and knowledge for the game on the scientific level is unbelievable, you know. If, uh, there's a lot of people who just kind of like free stroke and play the game and for the love of it. Mike figures out every single angle, every single possibility that comes with the game. Um, and those people that have been coached by him have been, you know, very beneficial from that. If you can understand, you know, just what goes into the game from a physical aspect, not just the mental side, but just the physics involved in this game are unbelievable. I think out of everyone that I've watched, Efren probably has the best handle. <laughs> on every single angle. I mean, Einstein theorized that there was over 5 million different shots. He might play a safe behind the 7 here, or or he could play aggressive again. Nope. He chose a safe behind the, the 7. But I don't think he got there. I think he's leaked out just a touch. What do you reckon? Efren knows 4.5 million shots? Maybe, maybe 4.6. Well, maybe 4.6. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Dell, thank you for your comments. Uh, Dell is, is one of my favorite players to play here out of Amsterdam. I, I've had quite a few battles with him, and he's he's actually strengthened my game, and hopefully I've had the same effect on him. But we definitely like playing each other quite a bit here. You've All helped right. you've helped me sleep at night, mate. Put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> it might be a window with a view here between the two and the or the six and the nine on that two ball. That would be a little brutal for Efren if that's the case. We call we call that the Watford gap back home. <laughs> so those in the UK will know what I mean. All right through the Watford gap. Just a reminder, the race is to 15, so this is an exhibition to 15. Um, great shot by Mika there. That was a great safety he played. Thanks to everyone out there that's sharing the stream for us. Uh, the numbers are slowly creeping up. We're about to get into the, the crux of this. Um, we're about halfway through right now. Uh, Dell, if something does come up that we want to replay, uh, I think Rad can probably accommodate us, so just uh, s send me a reminder over here. I will, mate. I'll shout out loud. Wow. Efren played that with inside, and it just checked up off that off that first rail. 
The table's playing a little wet, surprisingly, with all these lights on. It, it seems to be coming up a little short. It does, yeah, which is unlike this table. Now Mika has ball in hand. He's already three racks ahead, and uh, he doesn't look like he's going to give Efren any opportunities. If he can win by a seven-frame margin, he certainly will. You know, uh, I've watched quite a few of Mika's matches, and he seems to be one of these guys where everyone just plays their best game on him. <laughs> you know what I mean? I've, play, I've seen some of the greatest shots ever played against Mika. You're one of those guys, too. I see everyone have their best game against you. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the only way, way that I lose, Del. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> nah, I... I you know, Mika just, a, he's such a phenomenal player. And sometimes guys just, if anyone's seen some of his, like Chris Melling's um, game against him that's that's gotten uh, viral, uh, pretty crazy. Uh, I've seen Efren play uh, one of the greatest matches ever against uh, Mika in the U.S. Open. Yeah. Uh, yeah Corey Duell <laughs> just did a break and run exhibition on him, you know, one year. It's, it, yeah. it's been a little brutal for, for Mika. And Corey's yet, got that in his locker, though. Corey just comes out the gate swinging sometimes and it's unfair. Right, but yet Mika still has won so many championships despite all that. Yeah. But, yeah, I agree with you. People people often forget that uh, Mika really dominated the, the tens, if you like. He was player of the decade between 2010 and 2020, I believe. Um, and that's, that's no mean feat to be that type of person. Can get some bad press sometimes, but he does truly treat the game as a professional. Oh, absolutely. I, I know Mika's got some... Uh some emotional uh, leakage sometimes. He gets a little upset with himself or uh, some scenarios, but uh, just overall, passion. yeah, just overall he's a class guy, you know, does the right thing. He's also done quite a few charity events, you know, over the years where other guys aren't willing to do that. You know, it shows that he does care about pool aside from uh, oh, 100%. <laughs> just a performance standpoint. And he's not finished yet. He keeps himself in great shape. And uh, he'll, he'll be playing for another 20 years, I can guarantee you. Yeah, there's been a little pep in his step recently, too. I, you know, uh, we won't say anything may uh, has any influence on that. But, yeah, he's been shooting really well lately. He doubles his lead, uh, takes a gap to, to four racks over Efren. Efren kind of slumped in his chair off camera. Uh, if uh, guys just want to have a quick look. Uh, guys, we'll talk to the technicians a little bit. Sorry if it's a, if it's a little too much uh, TV action. A lot of times on these uh, live streams, they don't have any capabilities to, to move it around. So uh, this is a little bit new software, so might be a little excited with the camera angles, but uh, trying to give you guys the best views. Don't be too hard on them. It's, it's a pretty amazing product when you, when you, when you get to look at it. Uh, he will also have this uh, up later on YouTube, probably edited. So uh, if you guys want to check it out after the complete editing is done, uh, might be a different product. Come on, show, show Rad some love, guys. Pre pretty amazing match you're getting to watch because of him. Yeah. Uh, the channel is going to be Billiards Media, guys, if you want to check out some of his uh, other streams. <laughs> One of the guys said that Efren's sandbagging. <laughs> <laughs> He'll get, he'll get a better game with Efren on the private table later, off the stream. All right, uh, Brooke from the other side. Uh, he, he needs the cue to, to stop so he can get position on the two, which much, he got. much better result. And uh, if he can get straight in on the three, he's got a stop shot to the four. You'll see John Lehman uh, be a referee and move the rack without moving any of the balls. And this is a pretty natural out, out. The three leads naturally to the four ball. Four to the six, I'll have to go one rail or around the nine, but nothing complicated here. Yeah, just two rails and back into perfect shape. The stop shot will just be lovely. Right, he'll play the seven in the side and the eight, nine in a pretty foregone conclusion. So uh, it's a good little rack here for Efren to, to get some more points on his side of the board. Six to the seven will be great. My boy Melina Mike, I can't wait for you to go to the derby, bro. I'm, uh, I'm really looking forward to that. Now, do you attack the eight here or try to try to miss it? I, I think he's going to attack the eight and, and play position for the I'm, seven uh, in the corner now. Uh, I don't like touching the eight at all. He's going to come around it. Okay, he was able to avoid it. Yeah, nice, perfectly. And nice what, shot there. I mean, beautiful you know, touch shot. Able to miss the eight and uh, not have it be a problem. Uh, good choice there by Efren, of course. 
Always a good choice by Efren. If you guys don't know Melina Mike, Adam is a friend on Facebook if he's got any room left. That guy needs to set up a page because that guy lives and breathes the sport. Does a, a lot of great things for a lot of people that are involved with it. And uh, I can't believe we still haven't met, although he lives on the other side of the planet. <laughs> the planet to me is the USA. The USA. <laughs> There he goes. There is, a, back on the board. there is a shirt out there that says, what would Efren do that I kind of like? <laughs> I, I do like that. Is it fast and loose? Fast and loose to do that? I, it might be fast what would and loose. What, but, uh, what, does Efren, what would Efren do? Has a picture of his face that says, what would Efren do? And uh, that, that is pretty much the go-to. Well, we know what he needs to do now. He needs another three just to tie it up here with Efren, uh, with Miko. Hey, how you doing, Ed? Ed down at Sandcastle Billiards over in Edison, New Jersey. Another fantastic proponent for the game. Um, really looks after his players and puts on some great shows down at uh, down at Sandcastle. And I believe that's where Earl is the pro player now. So if you want lessons with Earl, give Ed Ladawi a shout. Uh, John did just say that they'll be taking a break after this rack. So we will have a 10 minute break after this rack, guys. So just a little heads up if you need to uh Go take care of anything. I'll have a few uh, minutes in between th the next rack. We are doing a race to 15. If you guys are just coming up to the table, uh, this is Mika Imanin about to shoot versus Efren Reyes, who's in the chair at the moment. Yeah, thanks, Dennis. We're up to 1.4 now. Let's keep giving it a push as we get to the end of this. I imagine that a lot of people will come back in for the end, uh, the last part of this game. We are going to take a break, like Mike just said. Just want to do a quick shout out to my friend uh, Stephen Root. Thanks for watching, bud. It's been a while. I hope uh, hope Chainstar is doing well. And uh, I think he can kill the the cue ball on this one and stay on the left side of the table for the two. He, he has pretty big window with the seven. He'd have to get a little unlucky not to have shape off the two uh, with how far out the seven is. So um, the three to the four is really the only challenge I see this rack. Two to the three. I mean, three to the fours. Um, depending on how he lands on it, that could get funny. Yeah, he's got. He's probably going to try to play a three rail position, or uh, more likely a Z pattern from the three to the four. Yeah, I like to play low on this and just come one rail and stun it back from center table. Yeah, the three to the four is really. Uh, I mean, I think he's going to play a Z, come above the eight, and go over to the right side of the table. But he could try to play three rails. It's just. It's just a drill. This is a drill. You know, this is back and forth. Yeah. This is one of those drill shots you practice. He might actually be able to play past the seven. Yeah, he's able to play past the seven, so he's a little thicker on it than we thought. This is a nice little play, play there. He'll play the four in the right, five and seven in the left, and then a stop shot in the eight uh, for the nine in the right corner. Uh, it should be uh, pretty easy here to get out. Mika's one of those players that doesn't like to be predictable, so I, I don't like to guess what he's, <laughs> what he's trying to do. <laughs> But you can, Mike. Mike's very good at getting inside people's heads. So he came a little bit far there. That wasn't the best shot. But again, he'll use a little bit of inside. I like going two rails by the, by the corner pocket here. By the right corner, just trying to swivel out of there. He went one rail. You like the two rail route there or one rail? I prefer two rails personally, but yeah. they're each their own. You know, if you like to draw it on and off there, sometimes you can fall short or, or overcook that. But if you're Mika, you finish perfectly dead straight. As long as you, <laughs> as long as you land with a stop shot on the eight to the nine, I, I guess you can't argue, right? Yeah. All right, guys. So a, a, a brief break here. A quick shout out to Chumrun. Switch over to John Lehman. We know him as Ping. I uh, hope you're doing well, Ping. I believe our mic is going to stay live. So, guys, any questions, fire away. Me and Mike will still be listening. Hey yeah, guys, I'm gonna I'm gonna do a little uh, announcement about the leagues coming up. 
So uh, John's talking about the leagues. Uh, this is the last week of the playoffs. So Monday will be the playoffs here at Amsterdam Billiards. We will have the straight pole match live at uh, round 6.30 or 7, I believe 6.30. And uh, Steve Lipsky is waiting for a match that's going to commence Saturday at noon. Uh, that'll be Tim Edmonds versus Tony Robles. And uh, most of the New Yorkers are familiar with Tony Robles. Uh, he's got a raffle going on right now with Chuck Ali. Hey guys, we will be about five to ten minutes here. Players just taking a rest break. This is my opportunity for uh, to get another bucket of Stella. <laughs> the waitresses are being kept incredibly busy here tonight. Yeah, we do have an amazing staff here at Amsterdam Billiards. Uh, David Padilla, the general manager, uh, helps organize these things for uh, Greg Hunt, the owner. Uh, great experience here for the regulars that come in here and play, and the uh, onlookers here, especially for Efren versus Mika match. Not a bad question. How many hours has Ephraim played pool for in his life? Probably uh, more hours than he slept. So <laughs> I like that Earl. Earl said that he's hit over three million balls. He's potted. Sorry, he's made over three million balls in his career. <laughs> made. That's not shot at. That's made. That's made. Yeah. Obviously, because every ball he, he shoots at, he makes. Right. Earl also said that he's never missed a ball. <laughs> I, I've heard him actually quote that. <laughs> If you are down here, they are raffling off a ticket as well for two signed Ephraim Qs. And there's a lot of uh, a lot of locals here signing up to play the man himself. Again, it doesn't cost them anything. All put on by Amsterdam Billiards here. Notice a lot of pros here are uh, watching this. Uh, Mike DeShane, who's uh, probably a Moscone Cup possibility, uh, just logged on. Thanks for sweating this, uh, Mike. I also saw uh, Jacoby logged on. Uh, thanks for watching this, Brandon. Hope it uh, hope it's a good show for you guys. Hey, what's up, Zane? No, nothing, nothing for me uh, in Toronto just now. I know they do have a good a good venue there with Corner Billiards. Is that right, Jim White's place? I would love to uh, make a visit up there. I was in Toronto back in 2012. It was the last time I was there, actually. Um, but would love to come back now that you've moved over from the UK, bud. some action in the room there you go Mike Molina's uh, Molina's definitely got action for anyone that probably wants anything against Efren <laughs> Thank you. 
Guys, we are just on a small break. Uh, we should be back in around five minutes. Thanks everyone for staying logged on. Hopefully you're uh, getting some refreshments. Ready for the second half of this game. Just going to refresh my screen as well. Just a reminder, this is a race to 15, so we're about, I'd say this is about halfway point. Efren needs to hit a gear if he's going to catch up with, with Mika. Mika's going to push on. I'd love to see him, I'd love to see him uh, catch a gear and try and bring this one back level. Yeah, Mika's signing some shafts right now. That Q shafts, right? Are, the, are those Mez shafts? Uh, no, I think they're fan. They're just fan shafts. All right, all right. Fans asking for Mika to sign their shaft. Sounds ominous. You notice there's a lot of entente in pool. There is, there Balls, is. shafts. It's a lot of, lot of fun to do commentary with those words. <laughs> The Derby, uh, Derby City Classic is coming up, guys, uh, for those of you interested. But the uh, I heard that the 14-1 uh, George Fells Memorial Challenge is not going to be a part of that anymore. Um, but we're, we're hoping that that changes soon and that we, we get straight pull back in that. Uh, I'm a big straight pull lover. I know Dell is as well. Uh, Dell actually plays out of the straight pull league here uh, at Amsterdam Billiards, and he really does appreciate straight pull. Uh, talk, yeah, talk great, about straight pull. Uh, my buddy Bob Coates uh, is in the uh, in the audience watching the match. He's a big straight pull lover. Yeah, so we'll try and keep the stream on if uh, some of the guys want to watch uh, some of the, the, the locals take on Efren. That'll be occurring about 9 p.m. this evening uh, at BST. So that being about an hour and 15 minutes, they're going to play some exhibition matches off table uh, with some lucky players that have managed to get on the list. Hey Mike, do you think uh, Efren will sign my chest and I'll never wash again? Yes. <laughs> There's a nice picture that someone brought in that Efren's signing. Lovely. There's an amazing amount of energy here in the room. I, I hope that everyone's appreciating this outside, uh, but very lively here at Amsterdam Billiards. <laughs> Guys, I can have a... We got four minutes before he starts, guys. Uh, John just gave the announcement. Yeah, let's get it done. Look at the camera. <laughs> I want this girl's telephone number. You gotta give me the telephone number. Bro. I want the telephone number. Me. It's me. It's me. You don't want to. She looks so cute. Michael just ruined that hat. Odell, I'm not sure. I don't think her husband's going to like that too much. It's all good. Uh, guys, we'll be commencing here shortly. We are here live at Amsterdam Billiards, 11th Street, between 3rd and 4th Avenue. You're watching Efren Reyes versus Mika Eminen. 
We're having an exciting match at the moment. Current score is 9-5 in favor of Mika over Efren. This is a race to 15, guys. I'm actually going to do a quick shout out to uh, Upstate Al. We were just at Turning Stone Classic with Dell and I and had a good time over there. Yeah, it was a great time out. I, I just went up for the weekend. wasn't playing this one, but... Oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, but he did do commentary, and it was nice to have you in the booth again, Dell. It's always a pleasure. All right, everybody, get in the sheets. We're about to start again. All right. I'm sorry. Efren does normally charge for, for autographs, but he will be doing them for free here tonight because Amsterdam's covering his fee uh, to be in the room um, and to do these exhibition matches uh, and obviously to, to take selfies and, uh, and sign uh, whatever memorabilia these guys want. Do a quick shout out to uh, Chris Hogan. Uh, he used to be a regular here at Amsterdam. Uh, Franklin's watching as well. Good to see you guys on the stream. Uh, Elvis Rodriguez, who's actually taking part in that uh, MMA uh, charity event with uh, the pool. But uh, let's see, I, I think John's about to rack and we're about to get started again. So uh, everyone's excited. Everyone came back to their seats. It looks like it's about seven people deep or six people deep around this table. It's pretty pretty phenomenal, actually. Just gonna ask Rad, Rad, can we just do a sweep of the audience again? See if, yeah, if we can just get uh, everyone that's just kind of sweeping in here. Yeah, we'll be on that in just a sec there, Adele. I think a guy wants to prove where, where he is to his wife. <laughs> he hasn't been home for three days. <laughs> yeah, he reserved his seat early. He really did, yeah. <laughs> hasn't been home. All right, he continued to break from this left side. He had such a good result last time. That makes a lot of sense. Oh, missed, the wing, missed the wing ball, though. Yeah, he's made the eight. Get a good roll and make the eight there. That was fortunate, but I don't think the one goes through the gap there. It does not. Which uh, means he's going to have to come up with some sort of creative safety. And if we did need something creative, we're looking at the right guy to do it. He could play a carom off the one and make the five and play position on the one. Obviously risky. Yeah, that was a little little easier to execute. He just played a straightaway safety to get him behind these three balls down the middle. I uh, hit the right side of it and just played a, a natural roll. Yeah, that was a beautiful safety. A little, little easier to well, execute. We got to get a he replay of that for you guys. Straightaway safety to get him behind these three balls down the there middle. I uh, hit the right side of it and just played a, a natural roll. Yeah. He just killed the cue ball and then it took the spin off that second rail. Worthy of the waistcoat. Good hit, but scratched. Unlucky. Mika's very unlucky because it might be a 1 2 9 combination, um, especially with where the 4 is. I could see him. Attack, you think it'll attack the 2 9 just to get a quick one on the board? He could. He is down by quite a bit, and that would change the momentum a bit. Or do you think he just runs this out? Not necessary, though, for him to do that. He's just got to run it out. Yeah, he chose to run it out. I, I like that. I, it is a little off angle on the 2 9. And They've he just is... had a little break. They've had a little break. He wants to get his hand on the table. And this is he a wants very, to send a message. Yeah, it's a very natural run, too. Sends a message. Uh, he's still in this fight. Yeah, the gloves are off. Yeah, he also just wanted, you know, he doesn't like, I don't. he doesn't strike me as one of those guys that wants to get an easy combo. problems here Mike. Yeah I actually like to go all the way down to the short rail. I'll see if he does that. He might not do that but I, I would go all the way down. He's just accepting the middle of the table. You're a maverick Mike. You're a maverick. 
I, like to, I guess I probably like to move the cue ball a little, fun, a little more, <laughs> have a little fun, you know. I think everyone does too, but perhaps when you're uh, you're four behind. <laughs> yeah, time to play a little more simple. <laughs> Someone very smart told me play the table, play what the table gives you. Oh, Jeff got me with the waste goat. Oh, what a comment. Yep, yep, yep. The waste goat. Great punnery. Great punnery. Can you expect that from a Brit? Well, you can. That's lived in America half his life. Hope you're well, Jeff. Hope everything's uh, going good out there in Long Island. Uh, he's normally a regular here at Amsterdam. I, I like to see Jeff drive down, but it's, it's quite away from... Uh, the seashore that he is. What's that? He's not in quite in Montauk. What do they call that? From uh, the seashore, huh? Out in Montauk, not just Montauk. What do they call that? Hamptons? Yeah, there you go. Yeah, Long Island. He's out there in the Hamptons. <laughs> yeah, Long Island. <laughs> the Long Islanders. <laughs> Guys, uh, a wannabe house pros uh, that used to play at Amsterdam, a, a straight pole lover and uh, league runner here, uh, Danny Birdie, just got on the line. We're on the stream. Uh, do a quick on shout the, out to on him. the line. Yeah, oh, on the line. Mike. Are we on the line yet? We, we are on the line. Danny's got a poster <laughs> here. That's how famous Danny, or I should say, a painting. Has Danny has Danny escalated past the flip phone yet? Or he has. He has. Yes. He's actually not how's he on even, the line. How's, how's he on the line with the flip phone? <laughs> a luddite. Mika has a great shot on the one here, natural shape to the three, to the four. So uh, this could be a pretty easy F one, uh, assuming he doesn't make any unforced errors. Yeah, he doesn't want to be too straight, and that's perfect. He can yeah. use uh, use one rail and back out, or he can just draw straight. He can just draw straight down table, depending on how he wants to play this. I prefer to go forward and use the rail. Yeah, it usually helps judge your speed when you go forward route, so I, I like that as well. Yeah, he played that great, and he wants the straight areas the better now, because you can just draw this back a, uh, just half a foot. He might be favoring the wrong side. Uh, we'll know shortly, but I think he's all right. He can cheat the pocket. It's, it's, it's about a foot wide. Yeah, you got the better <laughs> angle than I do. <laughs> he did go forward, though, just because it's Mika, and I can't believe that's a scratch. Oh, my days. He nearly scratched from there. Yeah, he took a little breather. Uh, nice deep breath, as you can hear now. On the, I think the whole crowd took a breath. On, on the oh, mic. God. He got a little nervous. I got a little nervous for him. <laughs> Should I have used the restroom in the break? I don't know. I think I might have now. You probably don't need to anymore after that shot. No. <laughs> <laughs> he got a, a little straight on this, so he's going to have to pop this or go forward two rails. I suspect he'll go forward uh, with a little bit of inside to get over there. It looks like he's queuing low on the ball, Mike. So he had a couple of options. He just wanted to do one rail and out. Yeah, so he popped it. He plays that shot better than I think you know 90% of the players I, I, I see play that he's able to control it very well yeah a lot of weaker players uh, would jar that ball trying to try and execute trying that to, shot yeah you know. trying to give it the pace but uh, Mika's quite uh, exceptional at that shot very like nice said. thank you Ed Briscoe for the nice comment I appreciate it Mike's uh, me and Mike uh, do a lot of commentary together I think we balance each other out quite nicely yeah, Del makes me laugh, and I keep it serious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he gives the uh, he gives the pool nerds what they want. Yeah! I just keep him in check. <laughs> All right, great shooting from Mika. And uh, I believe Rad updated the score. Current score is 10-6 in favor of Mika over Efren. So he keeps that four four right lead that he's been uh, he's been preserving since. Uh, before the break, yeah, I haven't seen many misses. A couple, uh, a couple missed safeties, a uh, couple unforced uh, odd errors, position-wise. There really hasn't. I, I, I tend to agree with you. I mean, I don't think anyone's really missed an open play drastically without it being, you know, a, a difficult cut shot or a, a risky positional play. Thanks, Kenneth. I'll be down in Maryland for the next Maryland uh, State Eight Ball Champions, uh, I think, down in uh, Bruce and Cues in Baltimore. So I look forward to that for the guys from Lights Out Billiards, Jake Lawson, and a few other friends. 
When is that event? That's going to be February, uh, the weekend of February the 7th through the 9th. Awesome. Yeah, maybe I'll be able to go there too. Anytime, road, pa road partner. Oh, actually, you know what? Uh, during what that break. time, there's a, a tournament in Texas, actually, uh, at Skinny Bob's. And I think I'll be competing in that one, but uh, I might miss you. Uh, skinny Bob's. I love yeah. Skinny Bob's. Yeah, I know, right? Ray Hansen's yeah, running great, that event. That some great rooms in Houston. Have you uh, gone to that event before? I've been in Houston. Uh, I traveled there for a while. I went down. Gotcha. Um, down at Skinny Bob's and Bogies as well. I believe it, Bogies Billiards and Bar. Well, this will be new for me, so I'm a little excited myself to get over there. Yeah, I mean that's where the hotbed of pool was many, many moons ago. If you remember, Earl cut his teeth. They called him the Kid back then <laughs> when he was playing in uh, playing in Houston. In town that. Oh, that was unlucky there. All right, so Efren tried to use low outside, and he didn't have enough outside to, to twist off that uh, right rail and get back um, past the 9 7. Uh, and he's going to oh, be forced to kick there. this. He might right, kick so two Efren rails. He tried to use low outside, and he didn't have enough outside two rails to, makes it to a bigger twist ball, off that I think, uh, right I think rail. It, gives him, it affords him a better opportunity to get the, the three safe. One rail is just with. Uh, I think there's too many anomalies there. Yeah, you think he tries to get him behind the eight or tries to play uh Yeah, what a shot. I mean, he's going to get none of very unlucky there. Yeah. If the four's not there, that's a great shot. Yeah, you think he tries to get him behind the eight or tries to play and, uh, uh, probably another one chalked on to yeah, uh, a shot. side. I mean, he's going to get uh, none of very unlucky there. Yeah. The three to the four. There's a little distance, so he's got to control his draw very carefully. I like that question. You're right, pool is a very accessible sport. If you think of the pros that play this game compared to, let's say, soccer, baseball, NFL, tennis, golf, there's no way you could get this close to those those professional players uh, and have the accessibility that we do on this. Uh, even in snooker, you can't just like, you know, walk up to a snooker player in their home room and, you know, I find them to be very friendly here in America. You know, you can go to pretty much any of their home rooms and speak to the pro and gain lessons with them sometimes they'll even shoot around with it you know it's a highly accessible sport for Paul it is you, you know I met Ronnie O'Sullivan and he was actually quite uh, accessible uh, surprisingly when he was uh, in town for that uh, yeah, the, if you're talking about Bassage. the goat he's probably the goat of all of all Q sports ever <laughs> for those that know Ronnie O'Sullivan uh, from the snooker stage he can just about do anything with a Q but he's not an out and out uh, nine ball or American ball player, so earns far too much money playing snooker as Mika just runs out. Oh, that pop gun. shot again. Yeah, that pop shot, see? That just plays on and off the rail. Do you think that uh, him, like him switching to the carbon fiber shaft has helped his game at all? You know, uh, Mika's game's always been pretty incredible. He would definitely be capable of playing with a broomstick. Um, I know he's he's a big fan of it. He likes it for several reasons. He is using a glove now uh, that he went to the carbon fiber. He finds it uh, uh, a little more, um, how should I say, slick with the glove than when he had a uh, wood shaft. And he is selling those gloves. But uh, he does like, like the carbon fiber a lot, and he's a, he's a big fan of it. He does say it's a lot more powerful, and I, I would agree. I'm using the carbon fiber. I know you're a, you're a wood fan yourself. Um, I do love wood. But there's take, a, take that as you will. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll talk to Hillary about that. But uh, oh, no. uh, yeah. Hey. Hey. But um, you know, there's there's a lot of facets to the carbon fiber, and I I know why companies are, are going that way with the uh, straightness of the cue, the uh, same feel every time, and the uh, same deflection and swerve. You know, it's it's hard to deny the the possibility of, of everyone moving that direction in the near future. I uh, I hope I can get you on board soon, there, Dell. Oh, you're welcome, mate. I look forward to it. It'll be fun. But you'll never get me on that. <laughs> yeah, someone mentioned uh, Jason uh, Shaw on this, and Jason's one of those guys that's just very kind and very uh, supportive and does a lot of charities. Uh, quite the ambassador of the sport, much like our New York own uh, Tony Robles. He'll be there Sunday at the Players' Ball as well. Oh, awesome. Like I said, he does a lot of charity events. Well, I'll, actually, uh, I'll actually be over there as well with uh, with my wife Christine. We're uh, excited to see that. What a break there! Um, just when you're eleven six up, you you know, it's not like he, he needed a roll, but he's got a fantastic break there. Uh, I'm fully expect him just to extend his lead here. 
Efren really not really had done too much wrong because the way I see it, Nico's just controlled this match start to finish. What do you think? Yeah, three balls in the break, uh, wide open rack. Uh, I don't like anyone playing against that guy. You know, it's just hard to win. Yeah, the, the, the table is playing very generous, as you can see. You know, there is a lot of opportunity to move the cue ball around. That is a, a, a characteristic of nine ball, though. You have to fade the momentum, and when your opportunity comes, you have to dominate for a long period, you, you know, and that, that does create winners. Uh, but obviously very difficult um, if you don't get to the table and if the momentum doesn't really switch. It's just been a, a Mika show pretty much. It has been. That's the way he likes it, though. Oh, bad kick, but it's, oh, well, actually it's a lovely kick because we might see him move the cue ball now. I think he plays the bank here to hold this, or do you think he try try and go around three rails? I think he could go around three rails or play the six in the side if he wanted to go wide or mm -hmm. try to kill it with inside. He chose to kill it with inside and accept the longer shot. Yeah, that was very nice. So a lot of experience in choosing that route on that shot. The scratch is huge here though, right? Uh, He's gonna have to use draw. I don't think he can follow this ball. Yeah, he'll probably play the six or the nine in the side with the draw stroke. Oh wow, he was able to kill that. That was perfect. Uh, the scratch wasn't there. We misread that angle. It's just a follow shot. But nice, nice stroke by Mika. Like he used a, a draw drag shot into that to allow the cue ball to follow. Great shot. Yes, guys, we are live. Uh, Mika just needs three. Um, you know, watching Mika play pool is like uh, listening to John Coltrane play saxophone. It's just, it's just high-end quality performance. For those that don't know, Mike does play the saxophone, so he's qualified to make that comment. And uh, Efren plays as smooth as Miles Davis. I'll throw those two names at you in case you guys don't know. There's Super no, creative like Miles. There's no analogy off the table here. <laughs> or on the table. <laughs> Yeah, guys, uh, for those of you interested, Mika's been working out a lot, eating healthy, and uh, just been a, a strong winner recently. And uh, he always maintains his, uh, his health and uh, body. Um, and he's doing very well in life. It's actually a pleasure to see, uh, see him doing so well. Uh, always a big fan of Mika myself. Nice break there by Efren. Efren's got a shot at this, and I think we're going to see him move. He's going to work the cue ball a little now. So uh, Efren made one ball, uh, Mika made three, you know. Uh, he has a little bit more power in the stroke. And Six ball versus eight ball, always tough, <laughs> you know, in oh, rotation. Yeah. Here we go. Let's see what he can do. I mean. Do you try inside English and play short side on the No, on I, like the to, I like to follow this with a high right. A lot a of nice, obstacles. A, a, lot, a nice natural angle. I think even if he bumps any one of those balls, he's still going to be on the three. So it's the nine ball that I'm trying to avoid here. Yeah, you're trying to attack the eight and miss the nine somehow? Yeah, I'm trying to attack that. I mean, if he, if he goes full into the eight, it would be lovely. Yeah, that's a good call. I like that. You can see he just overcut it slightly. I think he overcut it to get the position on, on the queue. You know, yeah. that's a... Uh, you can see it just came short. Eight, Even if he'd bumped the eight yeah, there, he'd have been fine like on the three. And you can see, see there's just, just over overcut that. it slightly. It's come up nice. I think he overcut it to get the position. Going playing aggressive, but he might not. Uh, might not get rewarded. Four ball got in his way there, guys. Great shot, just not quite rewarded there. Going but playing he does aggressive, have a good kick. But if he, he might kick the three towards the upper right corner uh, as we're looking at the screen. He might save him behind the seven and five. I've, I've seen Mika jump at this before. Okay, hit it too thin. But I feel like he's respecting the uh, no the, jump. Old, the old no school jump ways, here. the no jumps. I'll do a quick shout out to another pro, a US, US great player, a Moscone Cup uh, player, Oscar Dominguez. Thanks for watching, man. We really appreciate it. I hope you're enjoying the match. I hope your room's doing well in California too. Hard times, a, a staple, staple in uh, California. Wow, I think he's just got the outside edge of this. He can put a bit of right hand side and he'll be able to just hold this. Yeah, a little twister. Yeah, just like that. Very nice. Little twister. The Filipinos play a lot of 15 ball rotation. 
Have you ever played that, Mike? I have. It's a it's a, it's an interesting take on straight pull. But obviously, playing the balls in order one through fifteen, it's a it's a hell of a challenge if you've ever tried it. Yeah, speaking of straight pull, a, a fun little challenge if anyone wants to practice straight pull. You can play straight pull and then play the last five in rotation. So you have to leave the last five balls up on the table at the end, and you have to do it in rotation. See how strong that is. I watched Thorsten Holman run a lot of balls doing that, and I was uh, was inspired. <laughs> Good little exercise if you guys want to try something at home. I'm just going to dip out the booth after this one. I'll be back in just two minutes. All righty. Another Stella. <laughs> All right, guys, a, a nice run for Efren. Um, and 7 12 is our score. See Mr. Tony Robles there in, in the background. Nestle Han, our, our house, uh, house crew. Greg in the background. Got a mirror watching, good guy. Regular here at Amsterdam. A lot of straight pole players, Sammy, Bob, Chuck. Gotta do a, a little shout out to all my boys. Lenora, hope you're doing well. I haven't seen you in a while. Yeah, guys, the players brought. Paul is going to be in Nanuet at her uh, spot. So, Lenore, thanks for watching. And uh, a good break by Mika, but not really rewarded. He's probably going to have to play a safety. And what he'll do is he'll uh, play the one ball roll up on the two. Uh, he doesn't like letting Efren kick. It's always a. Uh, a bit of a, a tall order to make make the uh, safety tough enough for Efren not to get a good reward, but he's uh, been pretty favorable this match, to be honest. A little more favorable than what is standard with uh, playing against the great Efren Reyes. Called the magician because of what he does when he's in a bad spot and uh, how he gets out of it. Yeah, someone mentioned uh, John Schmidt and uh, straight pull. Um, John, a good friend of mine, always uh, fun to have him around. Uh, hopefully we can get him in New York sometime soon, maybe do an exhibition uh, of his uh, 626 run. Uh, looking forward to talking to John soon about that. Lots of projects on the board here at Amsterdam Billiards. And uh, Dell's coming back to return with us. He'll be on the live here in a sec. And if Efren can uh, get deep on this one, he could get a good result and possibly leave uh, Mika in the bad spot. Okay. He felt like it was better to go ahead and hit it a little firmer and try to get a good roll. And uh, Dell is back on, guys. So, uh, Thank you so much. Welcome, Dell. Thank you. Just have to take a quick break. What did I miss? 12-7? Efren got one back? Yeah, Efren did close out that rack uh, when you left. He's uh, Lovely. He was able to get get out after uh, Mika did that kick on the four. Yeah, I think Mika's going to have a nice uh, side to side here. Just put the cue ball behind that wall, the 7-2-9. Yeah, oh, I like the shot he played. You know, wow. that's a, a shot. It's a pretty natural roll. The three that, ball though. does come into play, and that would be brutal if you get Ooh, saved. He just got a little wrist flick. There was a little wrist flick off camera there. Yeah, we got the. Oh, I like the, the shot. He played my favorite no, dance of me. And then we're going to see the jump cue come out. Look at that. Full cue, maybe. Yeah, he's going to go full cue. He does use a town tip, which uh, he's a big fan of, and I've definitely tried and, and, and loved it for some time. Um, a lot of good jump cues out there, and a lot of good jump tips, but he's a. Uh, favored to make that ball and uh, just came up short. Might get a good roll. I think it's uh, leaked. I definitely think that's leaked out there. Yeah. 
I like I like how he played the one, and it's a little unfortunate. The table has been playing a little short, and I think that's why he got stuck there. But uh, yeah, that nice three, aggressive that play. Was, that three was huge, but I agree with you. I do like to see the aggressive play. And uh, Efren came a little short there. He really wanted to go a little wider, uh, get more straight in on the three. Come a bit funnier when it's just when it's that, that close to the rail, um, the, the five ball becomes huge here. I didn't realize this, but Efren plays with a longer cue um, than with standard, and he's uh, yeah, the five, the bump on the five was huge. Yeah. Do you think he plays with a longer cue? I, I know he does, yeah, because oh. I've, I've shot quite a few inch? times on this table and I've never had a problem with the, with the pillar, and he was he was very close to the pillar there, so hmm. I, this has to be a longer cue, it must be a 60 inch. What a beautiful shot that wow. is. He hit the center of the pocket. Wow. So that didn't even touch the side. Yeah, let's see that's the different range. rays we know and love right there. Switching up left. What a beautiful shot that wow. is. Wow. He hit the center of the pocket. I'm surprised he's using the rest. He plays lefty exceptionally well. Might just be a bit of a stretch, though. He's, only, he's a small chap. He hasn't got the Highlanders reach. <laughs> he's got the Filipino reach. <laughs> Come out nice there. A lot of people would go for it. If, if he was able to reach that, he'd have gone forward. But just with the rest, he just had to make sure of uh, making that one. I see uh, Jimmy Rivera's also uh, on the stream. Thanks for watching, Jimmy. Uh, he'll also be there at that event uh, Sunday. Natural run rail out or two rails around? Two rails. Yeah, two rails. Yeah, beautiful. Always a couple options, but to go the two rail was a little more natural. He could use a running English as opposed to inside. So see what the crowd can give him a little boost. Yeah, a little, little pep in his step. Yeah, guys, uh, David Padilla there off to the side. Current score is 12-8 in favor of Efren. Uh, Easily surmountable lead, but uh, Efren's got to control the table when he gets to it. And uh, since it is alternate break, it does favor Mika from this point. Yeah, 100%. Uh, David, I totally agree with you. To be able to play billiards and make a living like... Uh, like Mika and Efren have done, uh, pretty exceptional. I, I, I do think it's a it's a fruitful life to be able to play pool for a living. I don't think it's even one percent of players. It's got to be like zero point zero two of people that can actually say they've made a living from playing pool. He playing the five ball, went back to the uh, left side, and you can see the one tracking towards the corner. He wants two the two ball big. to stop. Ooh, two ball got in his way. He's smiling. He knows he got a bad roll. <laughs> Efren always does take the bad rolls better than most. Someone just refilled my glass, so I'm grateful to them. Uh, ben Yoon is watching. He's a beer, friend of mine. Fairy. <laughs> we practice quite a bit. Do you like this one rail kick, or does, is he going to try and spin this two rails to get it safe? I like two rails. Uh, I feel like a lot more uh, good can happen off the two rail. One rail, you can make this ball. Oh my god, he's going he's for pushing out. He's Abs. pushing out. Oh. He's pushing out to the bank. I forgot that was a break. <laughs> I got super excited there. I was like, <laughs> I was about to see something I'd never seen before. 12 rails. <laughs> Safety. <laughs> Damn it. Sorry, uh, I, I'm surprised you haven't called the bank yet. I was more excited about my beer coming in and then I got all confused. <laughs> bank it, bank it, bank it. <laughs> bank it. <laughs> yeah, Mika actually is an exceptional banker. Uh, the position off the bank I, I don't think is there, so I think he's going to play safe. Yeah, he has to play safe. I mean, he found a nice gap there as well. That wasn't easy. Yeah, quick shout out again to Jason. Uh, glad you're sweating, man. Really appreciate it. Jimmy, all you guys, Oscar Lee. Thanks, guys. We really do appreciate it. If you guys can hit share, uh, get some more likes, get some more people sweating, this would be awesome. Yeah, he managed to get that that, uh, that one ball really tight to the rail, so this makes his safety, although you can see it, it makes his safety so much harder because 
he's always risking the double hit. See, the queue is definitely longer. Um, he's playing with, with, with a much longer queue than what is standard. <laughs> oh yeah, I mean, look, see that that was really tough to control, and it's leaked out. And this is a great chance for Mika, Mika just to extend to that five-game lead again. Mika or Mika? Mika. <laughs> <laughs> I guess the effects of Stella are real. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Meeker the hitman? <laughs> Just kidding, guys. Uh, speaking of the hitman, a uh, quick shout out to Thorsten. Maybe he's sweating this match, too. Yeah, Thorsten's a big fan of Amsterdam. Comes down, always looked after. Yeah, he's a, he's a great guy. And, uh, and he a recently had his 40th birthday here. Great person to have here, yeah. Just had his, his 40th birthday party uh, in Amsterdam just last year. That was a great night. I don't remember much of it. Yeah, thanks to Roy's Basement for sharing this as well, guys. Really appreciate it. Um, looking forward to watching your streams coming up too, guys. Uh, Mika is going to Derby. Uh, one of his friends said that Mika's going. Uh, maybe I can get in the car with him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was unfortunate. I mean, it was a really good safety by uh, Mika that allowed him to get to the table like this. Uh, just going to use a low right, come two rails round for the, round for the six. And then it's stop shot, stop shot. I'll oh, know the eight, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he'd be on the nine. Yeah, he'll swing around two rails and try to get pretty straight on the eight. Uh, short rail, long rail. Yeah, this is nice. Almost where the queue is now, just a little further to the left. I'm going to say it, but Mika's put on a clinic tonight. He's controlled the table uh, from start to finish. I he went the other way on me, but came up short. I think he was actually trying to get that position. I would have used draw. I'm a little surprised to use follow there. Um, I follow think he knows, I think line, he knows right? he's ahead, and he, he might he might just be uh, adding a little flair for the for the players and everybody that's watching here. Well, this is what you would call a blind cut, and uh, this particular shaft is really awesome in this shot. I, I love playing these shots uh, with a Reba like or the ignite like or the black like he doesn't want it on the rail uh, carbon fiber shaft he, he, he played a very nice shot there but wanted wanted an extra roll there just to take it off the rail you really have to cue these ones nicely and i don't know if people know but mika's been playing a lot of chinese uh, a lot of chinese ball recently yeah didn't he recently win the eight ball championship he did he won the portuguese open um up in lisbon yeah strong field there and uh for those that know, Chinese eight ball is that mixture of snooker and um, American pool. So played on a nine to four and a half, but with snooker cut pockets and American size balls. Again, there's that entendre we're talking about. Yeah, so snooker uh, pockets, <laughs> he means uh, rounded uh, corner pockets and, and uh, side pockets. So it makes it where it spits the ball out a little easier. Uh, you have to be a little more precise in the pocketing. So uh, when you come to a table like this and you've been playing Chinese pool for the last six months, it's uh, you can see where he's kind of like his queuing looks effortless. Yeah, it's like going from a snooker table to a bar box. <laughs> right, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> and not even a bar box, let's say like a Gandhi <laughs> or yeah. like a Valley. Again, you know, it's, uh, snooker's probably the number one uh, the number one cue sport in Finland. So obviously Mika would have been playing that as a youngster and then made the switch to American pool quite early. But a lot of the players that we see um, are avid snooker players. Darren Appleton, Jason Shaw, they can all hit, they can all hold a cue. Carl Boys, Daryl Peach. Okay, so he went with the cut break there. I got that for a break. Oh my and god! And if the two ball doesn't get blocked by the seven, which it did, it uh, did. would have been a hanger. Oh my days! Another Didn't three he... balls on the break. That was a beast. As someone's mentioning uh, Mika needs to play uh, SBB. Uh, there was actually an action match that was played at Amsterdam Billiards where Mika did play Shane. And uh, I, I gotta admit, uh, Shane was much more prepared for that match than Mika. Uh, Mika had been playing great, but he was uh, just not in form uh, that match. And Shane put a break and run or break and run clinic. Nobody needs to play Shane right now. Shane's yeah. a beast. I don't think anyone should challenge Shane for cash until he like drops off the radar a little. And 
buddy uh, Foster Stevens here uh, saying hello. Mic. It's good to have him around Amsterdam. He's uh, one of the ones that coordinates what uh, Mika a lot for a lot of his events. Uh, takes care of some other players as well. Uh, Mika pushed out, and it I looks think like Mika will uh, take the bank. You know, I think Mika is going to bank this. Do you think he can hit this hard enough, or he can get enough just to control this? If he can hit it thick enough, he maybe. can. Uh, he can play like a two-way shot, no? Yeah, he tried it. He tried the one pocket shot. Yeah, but he hit it too thin. He didn't have a thick enough angle to to get the cue oh, ball yeah, away. Yeah, right. Did hit it too thin. He tried to use inside English, and that ended up um, imparting on sort of two, which took it into the cue ball. And seven balls big here, so. Uh, well, someone used flash. We gotta, we gotta tell that customer no flash. <laughs> no flash photography. No flash photography, guys. <laughs> Sorry, I think I'm, the, the lights I'm yelling at now. the streamers. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. Yeah, everybody saw that. When when you do use flash, it it, it really does light the room up. Yeah, Efren now is a steeper cut, and it, you know, when people do do that, uh, do something that sharks them, a lot of times it doesn't affect the initial shot, but the position of the shot. I think two way here. Five, five onto the nine. Oh, sorry, five on the bank, five and, bank. and then carry him on the, the nine. If he does it, he's going to have a tough shot in the seven. If I he think. does it, the crowd's going to go wild. Yeah, but he's doing it. He's got to win a rack, so he's going to go for it. Oh, we went for both. Missed both. <laughs> Unlucky. Left a hanger. He does it, the crowd's going to go wild. Yeah, he's, yeah, but he's uh, doing it. He's, he's got to win a rack, so he's going to go for it. Oh, here. we went for both. No. Missed both. And as we all know, if you're in a nine Unlucky. ball, you definitely need a roll or two. Um, and Mika's had uh, the fair share of opportunity here. Oh, and there it is. Did we just commentate a curse him? Yeah. That's the first miscue I've seen. And perhaps he was just trying to avoid the scratch there uh, and dug into uh, it a bit too deep. Yeah, there. Perhaps he was trying to get uh, Efren a couple more racks so the match is close. <laughs> <laughs> no, we spoke to uh, we spoke to Mika beforehand. He was certainly he's not going to give him anything. <laughs> that was a nice shot. That was a fantastic shot, in fact. Wouldn't be surprised if uh, the jump cue comes out here. You know, we spoke to uh, we spoke to Mika before. Actually, get a replay. That. <laughs> that was a fantastic yeah, there we shot. Go. That was a nice shot. That was a fantastic nice, shot. Nice two-way shot there. If he made the bank, he would have he would have had the seven. Mika likes to go toe to toe though, and you know, with with Mika being a known kick shot player, uh, Mika's not shy of making a kick himself. Very easy to get the jump cue here and just. Yeah, some guys are talking about uh, Copen Yi and uh, Shane. Uh, what nice was shot. it? That was nice. Copen Yi is a, a sick player. Um, down. I don't think anyone wants to play Copen Yi, but I don't think Copen Yi is running to play Shane either. So, <laughs> you know, it isn't Co? Uh, it's Baby Co, right? Yeah, Baby Co is number one in the Baby world Co. right now. <laughs> I just caught. That's how I know the difference between them. This is versus Papi Co. Papi. Papi Co. <laughs> Now, uh, yeah, the Co's, the Co brothers are, are both killing. Uh, just beautiful strokes. Um, Chinese Taipei, right? Yeah. What a nice stroke that was by Efren. Efren attacked the nine there as well. And look where the, the eight ball is going to finish. This is perfect. Nice ripple of applause. Yeah, he can kill it or he can go multi rail. I, I like to kill it, but uh, let's see what Efren does. That wasn't easy from where he was. No, that wasn't at all. Quality it's shot. Like he was trying to, like, uh, uh, yeah. was trying to control both balls there. Oh no. Uh, just when I thought uh, Efren was going to get back oh, in no. this match. Sorry guys, we bumped the mic there. No, uh, I apologize there. But, uh, a little rough for Efren to miss that shot. Uh, yeah, that was... Uh, Mika's on the hill now. We're going to try and get David uh, Padilla, the GM, in the box with us. Uh, so it'll be three of us. Uh, we're going to bring him over in just a moment. Yeah, that was a big miss by Efren. He'll know that uh, he just leaked out. and That was a huge rack. Mika's on the hill now. Uh, so Efren needs every rack from here on out. Yeah, 
Yeah, I, I agree with Glenn that the uh, top 10 or 15 players, really the top 20 players, uh, are a toss-up in a race to 100. Uh, obviously, it really just comes down to the break. Um, all guys are performing at a very high level, so it's not really... Uh, I, I wouldn't feel comfortable betting on any guy uh, in the top 15. So it looks like Efren's uh, playing the cross corner and nailed it. What a fantastic shot. Definitely a replay on so that shot. Like uh, yeah, we got the replay, guys. Uh, cross uh, corner, bank, cross corner. Not rewarded, he nailed it. He's going to touch on the He's gonna have to bank one more. We do have uh, the other master of ceremonies, David Padilla, jumping into the booth with us here. Uh, and a great shot by Efren to get around the five and make the bank. It was pretty natural, but he still had to execute it. Yeah, that was a fantastic out. This is, uh, for me, this has been the rack of the match by Efren. He needed to turn it up, and he did. He's accepting a little longer shot, so he's obviously not trying to do too much. No, no. He knows now. It, it, most people know when uh, the jig's up. And you can see him put a little bit more effort into this one. I like that. So 9-14, guys, uh, in favor of Mika. And, uh, Let's get some words from the big man himself, David the, Ke the Killer Padilla. Hey, guys. How's it going? Uh, great, David. How are you? I am excellent. Such a great turnout. Uh, these uh, two incredible players. Uh, which is, oh, thanks. I mean, what about the people on the table? <laughs> oh. Hey, hey. Yeah. Uh, three incredible oh, players here. Three David's, incredible. David's not not no slouch. No. I, I could hold my own for for the most part, but you guys are amazing players. What do you think of it so far, David? Um, so far, I mean, these guys are putting on a show. You know, um, I know I knew that Miko. Um, wasn't gonna like let up. He was just gonna play really hard, and uh, and effort is just effort. You never know what you're gonna get with him. And you're gonna expect him to greatness from, from we, both of them. We've noticed he's not really had much of the role. Um, no, surprisingly, on these kind of tables too. He stayed nice and aggressive. And Mika really uh, trying to close out the match here. Mm -hmm. I yeah. don't think he's gonna do it off this off this one though. This what is do you safety. Think, uh, corner hook safety or put him behind the nine safety? Ooh. Probably put him behind the nine. That I like the corner hook. The corn, the, the, yeah. my, the, the nipple hook is my favorite. Yeah. We're He's not allowed to say nipple like that. Oh, there, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. That's right. But the, we, the, we can the say nickel, all you like. The, the nickel hook? The nickel. The nickel hook. Nickel. 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 <laughs> The nickel the hook. Other side you guys ever seen the nickel hook before? Yeah, exactly. Oh, he's going to try and. Uh, he's going to try and. No, he can't. He's going to come behind the nine. Yeah, he's still trying to use nine. He's going to come up short. And uh, Efren's got the cross bank. What do you think? I think he got the side pocket. You know, so the one in the side, and he, he kills the ball. So, right, David, we can't all cut balls like you. That's true. <laughs> Those diamond eyes. He's just going to cut it in the corner and go back and forth three times. <laughs> Yeah, I like oh, the cross, see? Cross nobody, ever, yeah. nobody else saw that? Oh. Yeah, this is uh, the second time he misses that kind of bank, too. I'll tell you what, David, what a what a fantastic turnout from the crowd. Oh, gosh, yeah. This is, the mo this is without doubt, the, the busiest uh, exhibition I've seen in the past 12 months. I, I, I agree with you. Um, we've had people here, from what I understand, since 4 p.m., yeah, they were queuing up outside. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I thought there was like a new iPhone coming out or something. So. <laughs> or the, new the, yeah, new the new Samsung? The new Samsung, yeah. You know. No? Nah, nobody does that. Samsung. <laughs> I have a Samsung. I love Samsung. Uh, <laughs> Apple Android? Yeah. yeah exactly. what, 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 what about the Google? <laughs> oh, Google's okay. Uh, yeah. I can't plug true. Google while I'm in the booth. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. That was a lovely shot. That's why Google's so amazing. Shot. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh... Mika's looking good here, and that's not good for Efren because this is the last rack if Mika runs out. So yeah, Efren's not even going to, yeah, sorry, Mika's not going to allow him to get double figures. Yeah, yeah. He's uh, pretty much focused, and uh, he's, I'm telling you, he's been looking to kill since What, the what do the players win for this, David? Are they are they being paid an exhi exhibition fee? Or yeah, they we have a something? standard exhibition uh, fee that we offer the players um, to keep do this, Keep it secret, nice. keep it safe. Yeah, exactly. I'm not going to tell you what that is. So. But yeah, yeah. They're, they're playing for something. They're playing for pride. They're playing the competitive oh, edge there. You know, they both love this room. Uh, I know that Efren um, loves coming here. 
so which is great. And, uh, Will this be his last time, David? I don't think so. Uh, we That's thought it. last year was last time. I don't. I don't think it would be. When I, I first keep going. started working in Amsterdam, there was an exhibition with Efren mm -hmm. and Ginky, and it ah. was awesome. And uh, Efren, I was like a B player. And I saw from cracks in the back, and I, I asked the GM at the time to cover me. And I went and watched him play for like an hour, and he wow. asked me to play with him. Ooh. And I was, you know, like 21, 22. It was probably one of the greatest moments of my life to play him at, at that time. Wow. This is kind of straight. Oh, he's got this. Yeah, he but, should uh, be on this table. But. You know, Efren, always been a super sweet guy. Bank always, it. Always very kind. Bank <laughs> it. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun. But, uh that was Amsterdam on the west side. I'm oh, there it is. Ah. We have our win, ladies and gentlemen. Glad to watch Mika perform well. I made no mistake, you like wanted that one. Hey, guys, I'm going to uh, depart now. Thank you for your time. And uh, you guys are always doing an amazing job. Uh, David, I love so hearing your voices. You know, and, I, and I mean that. So, uh, you guys bring this. Uh, you, you guys are just only, uh, you only make us better. So thank you. I'll see you soon. Guys, uh, while we have a brief second, I'm going to thank Jacoby, um, Amstam Billiards, of course, uh, Azala Botanicals, Kamui Products, uh, Narcoleptic Chalk Holders, uh, Baltimore City Cues, uh, Let's Go Print NYC, Nibs Nook, and the Billiardists for making this opportunity uh, come to realization for me. And uh, really appreciate those guys. Uh, Dell, thanks so much for performing and coming in here and doing commentary with me. It's always a pleasure. You're welcome, Mike. Thank you so much. Um, just a quick shout to the guys that make it possible for me to be here. Amsterdam Billiards, of course. Piku Tips, G2 Tips, OBQs, and uh, Chalky Sticks also. So, thanks very much for tuning in, guys. I think we're going to have a little, a little break from here. Yeah, uh, also, uh, thanks to Billiards Media. Uh, without Rad, we couldn't make this